So I've recently decided to change the training and the program that I've been using for, for that. Um, I found that my training had become a little stagnant and uh, I haven't really got a big goal now for the second half of this year. So I decided to, rather than use that as, a, as my main motivation to, to try and um, motivate myself in a different way with, with a more focused training plan. And for this year now, I've decided to try uh, Trainer Road. So it's not something I've used before. I've used Wahoo before and used the videos that they've got on that, although the training calendar and the way that that gives you a plan is very basic and I've never used that. So I wanted to see how this, um, how it reacts and this, the whole AI element that they are promoting and to see if it actually does make any difference and if the AI is intelligent in any way. Let's get into the software and first step is to build a plan. So you've got the choice when you first come in, you can build a custom plan or you can just use it and have on-demand workouts. After selecting to create a plan, you can then choose the style of event that you're targeting. There's on, off-road, different uh, events, styles, different distances. It covers pretty much all the events that you might want to do. It does cover all standard events and also multi-day stage races. And then when you're building a plan, you can import all your previous data. It uses Strava and Garmin, you can import it from those. And from that, it'll give you an estimated AI FTP. Uh, you will obviously need to have power on, um, on your rides to, for it to create that. For me, it was about 2,000 different files, so it takes a few minutes to come up with a plan and to also to give you that FTP. Once that's in place, you can put in details about your standard week, available hours, style of sessions that you want to do, indoor, outdoor. The estimated FTP provided seems okay. It was within, the, within about 10 watts of what I was using previously and that was calculated from Wahoo. Then within the custom workouts, there are over 5,000 different workouts available. Some only have very small variations, but there are a huge number to choose from. The individual workouts that it provides, you can look at alternative suggestions based on the time you have, if you have more or less time available on a certain day. And the software keeps it so the focus of the session is the, is the same, it's only the time then that would vary. And overall, the training I've done so far, I found the sessions okay. They've, they're not too uh, hard or easy based on the plan that it's been given to me, so I think it's overall been a pretty good setup. One thing I notice is it does seem to be a very heavy focus on power data. So if you only have heart rate, like I do on my mountain bike and my gravel bikes, or you simply use RPE, the software doesn't seem to match that very well. Another thing that seems to be lacking on any of the AI data pulled from the history of imported from devices is the amount of training that you've been able to hold previously. So while I've handled more than an average week easily in the past, as soon as I did a bit more than I think the scheduled 12 hours, the software kept wanting me to do rest days. Um, because I knew I was able to handle it, I just ignored it and continued with the original plan rather than doing the variations it suggested. So it takes me to the first big goal of the event. It's a, what I've put in as a Category B event, which is the Brian Chapman Memorial, so 600 kilometer Audax. Uh, it's probably not going to be many other people's focus. But my aim is to complete the event in under 24 hours of a total elapsed time. And initial thoughts after the first period of training as everything seems to be going okay. Training is given an updated AI detected FTP, just over 10 watts. And um, also feeling much better on the bike as well. So we'll see how, uh, how this event goes. So Brian Chapman uh, Memorial Audax was on the weekend. And overall, I'm really happy with how it went. Uh, I won't go into too much details here. I'll have a separate video by the time this about training road is uploaded. It'll have been a little while ago. I finished it in 24 hours and 10 minutes. So although I was slightly out, that 10 minutes or more than that 10 minutes was my fault because of a navigational error. Uh, towards the end, there were some other things outside of my control as well. So I would have been well inside in a perfect, if everything had gone perfectly. Um, 
yeah legs felt really good I didn't have any issues that I've had from other ultra distance stuff in recent times so lots of plus points to take then for going forward so now the next goal is a Welsh Cross Country Championships now typically this would never be a main goal for me I haven't raced cross country seriously in a very long time but for this calendar more than anything for the race calendar I needed something to put in there so I decided to have a go at that now the training is going to be a lot more specific from here on lots more high intensity intervals and uh, we'll see how, um, how things adapt and how improve and I think that's now five six weeks away something like that so not that long really in the grand scheme of things after the Audax, things definitely became more specific to XCO. Uh, stuck at having two indoor sessions a week, and these were threshold VO2 sessions. I continued to see improvements, and there was another small increase in FTP from the AI detection. Although I think my actual FTP was probably higher, although I didn't I didn't do a test to. Then came the race. Um, the race went really well. Uh, I was able to hold on to the leaders from the from the gun and seemed to be climbing well. The people who, who were at the front, I knew right as well. I've never been able to, to stick with them on the climbs. Close at the front, the first few laps, there was a group of five of us together, and um, but I felt strong all the way through. So that's the race done, and this is the outcome. So Welsh vet, mountain bike champion. Um, so it might not be the biggest race in the world, but it was me I targeted, and I did beat people I've never beaten before, so I think Software's had, um, you know, it's had some benefit. Uh, it's not without faults, um, but ultimately, I'm going to I'm going to carry on using it for a little bit. I uh, decided to do a few more events. I feel like I've got a bit of fitness, so there's one in a couple of weeks and one in September. So I'm going to continue using the software, continue to pay for it. Um, so I think it is of some use. Uh, if there are downsides, it is, I don't think it uses my historical data particularly well. And um, I think it is a bit too cautious at times. I think if you're, if you're a racer who knows your body well, you might just be able to um, ignore the software at times if it tells you to do an easier session. Multiple times it was telling me to have a rest or um, do an easier session. I just ignored those um, at times when I felt fine. I know my body quite well and uh, at no point did I feel like I was putting any extra fatigue or pushing myself too far. Yeah, overall, it, I think it's, it's of use. I think the software is quite good. And like I said, I'm gonna continue using it. So hopefully it's of some use. If anyone's got any questions about the training software, anything like that, or um, comparisons against Wahoo, I could probably give some idea on that. Uh, thanks.